second guest speaker this morning. Our second guest speaker, he is a survivor of childhood cancer, and he has had, <clears throat> he is now currently an owner, a successful businessman who owns two DJ, DJ businesses. So he would like to come here and to share his experience of how he overcame many difficulties and how he was able to gain hope as he lived throughout his life. So at this time, we would like to warmly welcome Mr. Francisco Sandoval. All right, all right, how's everyone doing? Okay, okay. So as you guys know, my name is Francisco Sandoval and there, there are two things that you need to know about me. First and foremost, I own a DJ agency. Secondly, I survived cancer. So before we get started, I want all of you guys to please go ahead and stand up. Go ahead and stand up. Since I started off as a DJ, I really work a lot with energy, okay? So if you guys are all standing up, I need you guys to Give me some energy so I could feed off of it. So I'm gonna ask you guys to make as much noise as possible. Okay, are we ready? Okay, at the count of three, one, two, three, make some noise. Okay guys, that, that was weak. You guys could do better. You guys could do better. So now everybody put your hands in the air. Put your hands up, let's go. One, two, three, make some noise. All right, all right, now we're talking, now we're talking. Thank you guys. Now we have synchronized energies. And, and here's the thing, I can only talk to a group that I know can bring that fun aspect into a talk, okay? So as you guys know, I was diagnosed with uh, adamantinoma. That's the type of cancer that I had at, at the age of 16. You know, you guys all look really young, so age of 16, you're, you're trying to find yourself. And I was diagnosed with this cancer at that age. And, and it was devastating. It was something that affected me deeply. And adamantinoma is a form of cancer in the bone. And what happened to me is they had to remove my bone completely. So I'm gonna show you guys, if there's a camera guy, if you could uh, zoom in on this. And if not, if you guys could see it, that's my scar. Okay, they removed my entire bone from here to here. Okay, at the age of 16, it, 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 was, it was completely devastating. But I came back. Why did I come back? The doctor, when he uh, talked to me after my operation, he said something to me. He said, it, it's a miracle that you're alive, okay? A doctor said that to me, what? It's a miracle that you're alive? You lost too much blood? You're supposed to be dead? But you're not dead. So it's a miracle that you're alive. And I made a promise that very same day, I made a promise to God that I would give my life to him, okay? And what happened after my operation, maybe some of you can relate, after my operation, I got a job, I started making money, I, went, I was going to school, got a girlfriend, and that promise went out the door. I didn't think about that. I didn't think about that promise because I was making money and I was trying to live life like a normal person. But I had this reminder I had this hideous scar in my leg reminding me every single day that I wasn't normal, okay? Every day I wake up with, with pain, you know, I, I can't run. I, I, I feel that, that operation in me every single day. So I'm over here, you know, doing my thing. I decided to start a business. I decided to start a, a DJ agency and still, just trying to make money. That's all I care about. To me, success equals money, so I'm gonna go out there and make as much money as I can, and that's all I cared about. And my life was great, right? Because I was making a ton of money, so it was great. But the reality of it is that I was losing the most important things in my life. I was losing my family, 
okay? I spent so much time in business that I was losing my family. I was losing my girlfriend. When I was with my girlfriend, it was business this, business that, phone call here, phone call there. So I was losing my girlfriend. Eventually I did lose my girlfriend. You know, she broke up with me because I was so obsessed with money because I thought success equals money. And that's not true. That's not true at all. So I'm over here still doing my thing, perfecting my craft, getting better and better at what I do without the main things in my life that are truly gonna make me successful. My family, God, love, so why? Why is this happening to me? Why, why am I not close to, to that part of my life that's, that's really going to give me the joy that I want? Well, I started thinking about it, and all of a sudden, my leg, I felt that pain again, that reminder that, hey, you made a promise, right? You made a promise that you were going to give your life to God. And I was like, oh my God, I forgot all about that. I messed up. That, that's what happens. And it was that weird feeling in my leg that brought that to me. And I thought to myself, well, what am I gonna do with that? About three years ago, I watched this documentary called The Secret. Has anybody heard of The Secret? Yeah? It talks about how when you ask the universe for something, it comes back to you, right? Well, that sounds very familiar to something else. It's in the Bible. It says, ask and you shall receive, right? So I started asking, hey, you know, I, I want some success in my life, but I want, I want real success. People might tell you success equals money. Ignore them. Success is being able to do something in life that has purpose. Success is being able to do something and be proud about what you did, okay? It's this feeling that you create upon yourself that says, hey, I did something good for someone else and that made me feel good. I'm proud of that. How do you get there? How do you get to that point, right? I have this word that has been with me my entire life, even during my operation. It's intent. God gives you intent. Okay, so God's intent for you is what got me there. Well, what is, what is this? What is this godly feeling, right? How do you get it? It's unexplainable. It's one of those gut feelings that you get right here of wanting to do something and you don't really know why. Does anybody here work out? Yeah, some of you. Does anybody here play music? Instruments? Yeah? Some of you guys? Okay. What about uh, uh, you guys practice a craft that you love? Do something that you just really, really love? Okay. What makes you do that? See, I think the love for doing something outweighs the financial reward that you might get out of it. People who work out People who work out, they um, make it a point that in the first week that they're working out, they're sore, right? Who here has experienced that soreness after you like go running or you lift some weights? You're like, oh my God, I'm dying. Ah, leg day, right? Exactly. But what happens after a week? That soreness kind of goes away after two weeks. It's definitely gone. 
after four weeks, you start seeing results, right? You start looking at yourself like, oh, oh, you know, six months later, I got that six pack. Heck yeah, that's what I wanted. But then you have that six pack, but you continue working out. Why? Why do you do that? Because you have that purpose inside you, that gut feeling that God gave you, like, hey, this is good for me. Whether I see results or not, this is good for me. And, and I need to make that happen. Same thing with music. People who play instruments, you guys all know this. You warm up at least 15 to 20 minutes before you even start playing, right? You want to get to that song that you really want to play, you know, that, that Coldplay song, right? You really want to play that song, but you warm up before you do that. You don't jump right into it. What makes you do that? You know that God is putting that inside of you, so he's going to prepare you to do the, the song that you want to play to do it right, to be the best. And that's God's intent for all of us, not just in music, not just in working out, but in everything in life. Intent, God's intent is what you need to be a successful person. It's the key ingredient to get you to do what you need in order to get to the next level of whatever project you are working on. Whatever it is you're working on, right? And it's not just willpower. You know, a lot of people say, oh, you got to have willpower, right? But willpower runs out. Willpower doesn't last forever. It's something that just, it, it kind of dies out after a little bit. However, God's intent does not and we only get that kind of fire when we love what we're doing. And we only get to a point where we love what we're doing when it is godly. When that unexplainable feeling comes inside of you that says, man, I want to do this. I want to be up here talking to all of you guys. I want to share my story. I want everybody to hear it. Because I'm living on borrowed time. Right? I was going to die. I was supposed to be dead. And here I am. So I'm on borrowed time. And I got to do something with it. <clears throat> I, I had a friend ask me once. Why is it that you do so much? And why do you do it? And how do you do it? Okay. I'm a member of, uh, of Kiwanis. I'm the advisor for Downey High School Key Club. I minister at a young adult ministry in my church. I'm a member of the Knights of Columbus. I'm the ambassador for a couple of the Chamber of Commerces in, in the, my surrounding cities. Oh yeah, and I have a business, right? Can't forget that part. And she tells me, she tells me all the time, I wish I did as much as you. I wish I had so, I had so much willpower to be able to, to be involved and so giving. She tells me, I wish, I wish, I wish. And that's where her problem starts. I don't wish, I just do, okay? And I do so because I have this amazing gift. I have this gift that I wish I could share with all of you. This gift that's a reminder, this gift right here, that's a reminder that I'm not normal. That I'm living on borrowed time. 
I can't give you my experience, but I can tell you that you could learn from it. You could hear my story and be like, oh man, you know, he went through that and I want to learn from that because I, I don't want to go through that, right? I mean, nobody here wants to experience cancer, but you could definitely learn. People give talks all the time, right? And they do so because they're sharing with you guys and you guys have to learn. You guys have to take something from that talk to make it happen for you in your lives, for you to be successful in whatever it is that you want to do. So my answer to my friend was stop wishing and live life with God's intent. This is the force that will get you from I wish to I will. So do you guys want to stop wishing and start doing? Yes, no, maybe? There you go, okay, okay. <clears throat> guys, sometimes, sometimes I just wanna be at home and be lazy, watch some family guy, some good old fashioned cartoons. Sometimes I just wanna be normal and go outside and catch some Pokemon. Hey, I have the app on my phone. However, every single time I get that feeling, this gift, this reminder, it tells me that I have absolutely no time to waste. I remember that I already wasted a couple of years when I forgot about my promise. I remember that. Live life with God's intent for you. And once you have found that fire that makes you love what you do. Make sure you do it with God's intent. Do it with his purpose for you. Surround yourself with positive people. I, I love the fact that you guys are all here because it means that you care. These are the people you need to surround yourselves with in order to get that fire because these people are here to help you are here to enable you and they have that love right I'm sure you look at some of your friends and you know they're doing things and they're like man I wish I could do that I want to be just like that and those are the people you need to surround yourself with. The people that you can say, one day, one day I'm gonna get that done. And guys, the only way you're gonna get that done is if you live your life with God's intent for you. Become a person that has so much fire, that has so much intent that your friends start asking you, how do you do it? What drives you to do so much? Hopefully, your answer is going to be, well, I heard this one guy give this one talk about intent at World Camp. And that's going to drive you to be the person that you want to be. It's no longer going to be, I wish. It's going to be your friends asking you, man, how do you do it? How is it that you get that done? Success, you guys, is joy. Success is love. Love for what you're doing. 
And if you think that success equals money, you're never going to be successful. You might have a million dollars. You might have two million dollars. It's not going to equal success. But when you have God's intent for you, when you have that godly fire that is just getting you to the next level time and time again, you set a goal, you reach it, and you're like, what's next? What am I going to do next? How am I going to help someone? How am I going to share my story? How am I going to enable others? That's when you will experience success. And that is what's going to make you beautiful people inside and out. Thank you all so much for your time. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, at this time, we're going to take a short 10-minute break. We're going to take a 10-minute break.